Well, today we're going to be tying the mullet marauder, one of our favorite bait fish imitations, particularly in the fall time when there are mullet on the beach here in the northeast. And what we're going to be using for materials, we have some bucktail, particularly we're going to be tying some black and purple flies so for more nighttime fishing in the surf. So we have some black and purple bucktails. Again, you can use whatever color if you like. We have some Chinese saddle hackle in black and purple. We've got some marabou quills in black and purple as well. And then we have some Senos laser dub. We have some black and purple Senos laser dub here. We're gonna be using some black Danville 210 denier flat wax nylon. We've got some black Magnum flash blue as well for the tail. We're gonna be using some quarter inch 3D eyes, but you can use whatever size eyes you like, bigger or smaller, whatever you like. And then for the glue, we're gonna be using some E6000. You can use shoe goo, E6000, or zap goo. You can do a little bob and suck in here. All right, so let's get our two odd hooks. I think anyone that's been watching the stream for a while has probably seen me tie these flies before. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our thread wrapped on the shank here. We like to lay a, a base of thread down just to stop the material from spinning freely. Gives us a little bit more control. So we got our nice dark thread here for our black and purple fly. And what we're gonna do now is, you should take a little bit of bucktail, generally the darker color bucktail. You could do olive over white, you could do different colors like that. We're gonna take some black bucktail and we're just gonna tie this in. And this will be a little bit of support for the feathers that we're gonna be tying in for the tail. So the bucktail, you know, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use some of the stiffer stuff from the back because I'm not too worried about it. I'm running low on black bucktail as well. I'm gonna to have to pick some up here soon. But that'll essentially give us a nice little platform to support the materials. So that way the, the feathers aren't as prone to fouling, for instance. So we can go ahead and take some black and purple feathers. We're probably gonna do, I generally like to do two feathers on either side, so four feathers in total. So we'll grab two purple feathers for the inside and then we'll do two black feathers on the outside two feathers here. I'm going to go for some webbier type of feathers, a little bit thicker, so they have kind of a nice profile in the water. It depends, you know, you can always do a flat wing tail. I tie these in flat wing tails as well for some places, so. So we'll start out with some purple feathers here, and we'll make this fly right around about four and a half to five inches. I'll make them almost around six inches when it comes to the three odds, because the three odds are certainly a little bigger hook-wise and heavier. Just like any other fly you tie, it's all relative. You don't want to have too long of materials or too much materials for the size hook that you're using. It's all dependent on, you know, case by case basis. But too much Senos laser dub and too many, too much bucktail could certainly cause a smaller hook to not swim right. So we're gonna take our second purple feather here and tie that in. So now we got two purple feathers on the inside. Great tarpon color. Oh yeah, golden dorado. Rooster fish, giant trevally, striped bass, you know, peacock bass. Black and purple is a classic color for a lot of big game fish, for sure. And we're going to tie a black feather on either side over the purple. I'm trying to make sure not to wrap the saddle hackle stems too far forward because it will add, you know, they'll definitely add some uh, thickness to the shank. And I kind of want to leave some room there for me to tie all that bucktail and that Senos laser dub in. Let's tie our other feather in here. Now we kind of have a classic deceiver tail that you see in a lot of saltwater flies. All right, so now we need a little flash. And we actually have a little bit of loose purple flash that I have sitting around here, which is a perfect time to throw some of this in. We're gonna do a mix of traditional flash boo and purple, and we're gonna do some magnum flash boo in black. The only difference between magnum flash boo and Traditional flash boo is that it's twice as long and it's um, twice as thick as well. But this uh, this stuff really does stick out well in the water. I like using the pearl version for some of my other flies. It's a really good flash for surf candies if you want a flashy look to your flies. But we'll take some of this black magnum flash boo as well. And again, I'm just grabbing some flash that I have on hand. Feel free to use whatever you like. Crystal flash, polar flash, lateral, you know, uh, the smaller lateral scale, whatever you really prefer and I tie these with different materials for different places so it's all just dependent on, on what you want to use. Okay so now we're going to take some marabou and what we're going to do is 
You could Palmer the Marabou if you'd like, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tie some in top and bottom. I'm gonna take some purple for the bottom. I'm gonna look for some of the larger Marabou quills here so I can have some nice lawn Marabou feathers. And there's a little trick if you wanna tie some Marabou in quickly. The problem is if you just take your Marabou and you just tie it in like so, what's gonna happen is because you have that stem in the middle, that marabou is going to favor one side. So if you want a little trick to tying marabou in quickly, what you need to do is you can take the marabou quill and you can actually cut it right in the middle so there's a little bit of a V. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut it right in the middle, close to the stem, right? So now we have this V shape with our marabou. So if you want to be able to tie some marabou on quickly and get a nice amount without having it obstructed by the hook shank, all you got to do is then fold that in like so, and just tie that right down. And you're gonna get a really nice natural look. And it's just quicker than stripping the marabou off the quill. You can certainly do that. It makes a mess sometimes. Marabou is always gonna make a mess, right? I'm covered in this stuff right now, but it's a nice little way of tying in a, uh, a quill of marabou without having to strip it off. All right, so now we're gonna take some black marabou here. And again, look for one of the lawner quills. You know, for the top, you could get away without cutting that middle section if you'd like, but I always do it anyway. Just real quick as well, tie this one on there. I'll go ahead and take another one because that one was a little bit smaller. You just wanna make sure you tie that on flat if you're going to do that sort of technique and not polymer it. The reason I'm not polymering it is because I want uh, the black on top and the purple on the bottom so we can keep that kind of color combination going. So now we've got some marabou and we got our feathers and flash on there, our tail and our uh, little intermediate section. I like doing some marabou in between the feathers because it's a nice bridge between the bucktail. And again, it depends on how much marabou you want to tie on there. You can go light with it or heavy. It's up to you. You don't want to add too, too much. I wouldn't really go much more than this. That's a pretty heavily dressed fly right there but so now what we're going to do is we're going to do black bucktail on top we're going to do purple bucktail on the bottom and one of my favorite techniques when tying bucktail on hooks is doing the bucktail deceiver style where we slowly taper the material so we start out lawner and then we slowly taper it down for a nice natural look which bob popovics does a really good job of so we're going to take some black bucktail we'll start out with some lawner hair here Okay, so just a little bit of black bucktail on top. I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit longer hair here. I am running pretty low. I'm kind of on the bottom of my uh, black bucktails here. Again, not too much material, just enough to kind of build this, this body up. Go ahead and tie this in here. Whenever I tie bucktail, I like to take my thumbnail and just kind of spread that bucktail so it's on the top half of the hook. Using your thumbnail is a really good way of kind of controlling bucktail on a hook shank. So you just got to wrap it down tight enough. You got to find a fine line between wrapping it too much and, you know, keeping it loose enough so you can play with it. So now we'll take some purple bucktail, get all the smaller hairs out of the way. And again, we're going to keep it around the same length as the black bucktail. You generally see I tie the bucktail in just a tad shorter than the marabou because you don't want it to completely overtake the marabou, right? then you'd be missing out on some good marabou action on the back of the fly. But that bucktail is going to start building our, our body profile. It's also going to keep that marabou in check somewhat so it doesn't foul as easy. A little bit of a mess of the thread there, but we're just going to lock that down. And if you'd like, you can take a little super glue, for instance, or maybe some head cement, whatever you like, throughout the process if you want to try and make the fly more durable. I just like to at kind of pivotal points add a little bit of super glue just to strengthen up the fly a little bit. But again, we're just gonna slowly shorten the length of the hairs down so we can get that nice kind of natural tapered look to the fly. A Little bit of purple on the bottom, a little bit of black on top. 
So how's everyone in chat doing? I hope everyone's doing well. We got to figure out what fly we want to tie next week for next Wednesday. So uh, feel free in the Discord. We have a dis we have a section in the Discord now. I think you should be able to see it. it's like fifth or sixth down or something, maybe a little bit farther down for uh, in one of the channels to recommend some flies for what we're doing right now, which is tying a fly step by step. So not only everyone in chat here watching the stream can learn how to tie this fly, but you know, we're going to then take that and edit it down for YouTube. So for a tutorial for the channel. The old YouTube channel. If there's any saltwater flies or any freshwater streamers that you want to see tied, feel free to throw them in there and then we'll add them to the list of flies that need to be tied up. We're going to take our Senos laser dub here. And this stuff's really great. I love using this for the heads on flies in particular. It's a great material. I'm sure you could use it for all sorts of dubbing uses as well. But when it comes to making the head of a fly, um, it's a really great material for that. So that's personally what I use it for the most. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some purple for the belly. And depending on the pack that you get, some Senos laser dub will be longer than others. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to essentially kind of break it down. You can just do it by hand, kind of rip it. It tears in a pretty natural manner in terms of the uh, tapering of it. But We're going to lay our material down on the uh, hook shank and we're going to wrap right in the middle leaving some room right by the hook eye you definitely want to make sure you leave yourself enough room at the hook eye because we're going to fold this material back almost kind of like a half hollow tie type deal so now we're going to take some black here and sometimes i'll add a little bit more on top and bottom once i get both materials on there the main thing is if you do add too much of this material it's certainly going to affect the way that the fly swims so the last thing you want to do is overdress it so I like to get some black and purple on there or whatever the two colors I'm using. Or maybe one color if I'm going for a single tone, like all white or something. But I like to get top and bottom on here and then I'll figure out if I need just a little bit more. You're going to have to mess around with it while you're tying and see for the shape that you're looking for, you know. Okay, so maybe a little bit more black material. I think we're good on the purple. Should be enough there. Funny thing is here you see like this black um, Senos Laser Dub is a little bit shorter for some reason. I don't know if it's just like that specific uh, batch that they made. The hair is shorter, but that purple batch is uh, much longer. So sometimes it'll be different, you know, sometimes it'll be a little short. Sometimes it'll be long. For the most part, it's pretty consistent, but just something to note while we're tying here. Okay, so another important thing is you want to make sure you wrap your material to the same point. So if you've ever tied hollow flies, you always want to make sure you wrap your thread in a perfect straight line. So when you fold the material back, what's going to happen is you're not going to have the top half being a little forward or a little back. You want them to be even so you have a nice even head on your fly, right? So we're going to take a little bit of super glue, very small amount. This is what I use. And this is going to help kind of keep the shape of the fly. It's also going to make the fly more durable as well. You got to work kind of quick because this stuff... The super glue has a, a tendency to kind of mess the material up if you add too much and stiffen it up. So we're going to fold that back. And again, don't add too much super glue. You might screw the fly up if you do that. So you, you can skip the super glue if you like, but I think it, it kind of helps keep the shape of the fly and it helps the material from fouling while you're casting it as well. Okay, so we folded our thread through and we generally fold it right where the material um, splits in half so you can get a nice um, tie without grabbing too much of the material if you've ever tied hollow flies very similar type of thing and now what we're going to do is we're, we're going to whip finish here trying to keep that hook eye nice and clear 
So again, you want to leave yourself room by the hook eye when you fold that material back. Otherwise, it's going to be tough. You might clog up the hook eye, which is never a good thing. So it's always a good idea to keep some sort of brush when you're tying synthetic materials. Because a lot of times the materials in the pack or when you're tying it, they kind of get wrapped up in each other. So brushing it out is always a good thing. And having a brush on the water when fishing synthetic materials can be a good idea as well. Sometimes, I don't know if you've ever caught a bluefish with a synthetic fly maybe made out of uh, Steve Farrar fiber or Slinky fiber. And sometimes the material gets pretty fouled up. So quick little brush and the fly is ready to go. So I'm going to get my E6000 ready. We got our 3D eyes here, quarter inch predator eyes. What I like to do is I prop up the E6000 bottle in my little uh, trash bin here on my fly tying vise. That way, I find if you keep the bottle just sitting like this on your desk, the, uh, the glue is just going to start pouring out. It's kind of clogged up at the moment, so it's not really pouring out on this one because this bottle is a little old, but definitely the type of glue you want to put the cap back on. Not like my super glue. <laughs> so we're going to take a little bit of this E6000 here. Got a little hair on the back of the eye. We'll clean that off. Now it's very important you don't get too much of this glue because what's going to happen is it's going to squish out. A little bit of uh, glue spillage is all right, but we don't want too much. And what we do is we just kind of push that eye down and and put some pressure on there and that's going to cause the that's going to cause the glue to spread all over the back of the eye and uh, i must say once you glue any sort of 3d eye with e6000 to synthetic material it really does um, once it does dry in about 24 hours it really does lock it down well the eyes uh don't really tend to come off that easily unless they really get beat up from a hard day's fishing which most flies the uh they get beat up pretty easily so okay got glue all over my fingers try not to do that so let's grab one more eye here I'll give you a little close-up here when I press the eye down so I like to take a little bit of glue and go right to the back of the eye I don't cover the whole thing I cover the back side so that way when I go to put the eye down I generally place it a little bit forward of where I want it like this and that way when I press it down and push it back, what'll happen is it'll essentially cover the whole eye. So once I line that up, so if you push it, if you put it right near the front and have that glue on the back, and then you push down and you push back, getting the eye lined up where you want it with the other one, or in the position that you like, then that whole back side of the eye should be covered with glue. And that way you essentially don't have too much glue spilling out of the sides. Because if you cover the whole thing, you press it down, it's just going to flatten out. So just a little way of trying to get some neater 3D eyes. You can see a little bit of glue there, right there. Just a very small amount, but that's fine. You can always touch it up with your finger if you like. Just going to make sure that they're nice and even before we let the fly sit. And uh, they'll dry pretty, pretty much in about 5 or 10 minutes. But if you really want them to fully harden, you should uh, wait probably around 12 hours or so, you know. All right, and there we go. The Mullet Marauder. One of our go-to flies for the northeast when it comes to fishing for striped bass, bluefish, during mullet runs. We even had a couple albies on flies like this when we found them on some larger baits out in the ocean. So, Again, you can tie them in whatever colors you like. All black, all white, olive over white, um, gray over white, tan over white, black and purple, black and red, whatever you like. Or another nice thing about the Senos Laser Dub and tying these sorts of flies is when you have a larger head like this, when the water hits the head, it's going to flow over and it's going to cause these feathers in the back and all the soft material that kind of have a nice flutter effect to it. So there we go. The Mullet Marauder.